Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. I want to tell you about Anchor. I've been with Anchor since I started podcasting, and it's a great, great platform. Why is it so great? Because it's so easy and it's free. There's a lot of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast. You could do it right from your phone or your computer. Not only that, now you can add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are just endless, you guys. Whatever you want to do, you want to have your own radio show, you want to do music analysis, you could do whatever creative thing you want to do with Anchor. Also, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it's going to be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can also make money from your podcasts with no minimal listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Are you having a problem in your dating or relationship life and you need a question answered? Well, go to my website. The link is in the podcast description and you'll see how you can ask Yaz a question and get it answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description and look for the link where it talks about how Yaz will answer your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz. Today, I want to talk about attraction in dating, okay? And there's a reason that I'm doing this podcast, and I have a story to tell you guys, okay? Um, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. I tell you guys that all the time. I'm in over 400 Facebook groups, all different kinds of groups, okay? And each group has their own unique type of people that are in those groups, okay? Okay. You have some groups that are, you know, could be group, hood groups, all right? You have some groups that are very sexual groups, and you have some groups that are very snobby, okay? So the reason I'm bringing up attraction and everything like that is I want you guys to understand, you know, when you're out there and you're dating, you're going to meet all different types of characters out there, Okay? You're going to meet people that are very, very judgmental. And we came across it in one of the groups, okay? We had this guy in there who was extremely judgmental on the women, okay? We had a situation where there was a post and it was talking about, basically about a narcissist, okay? You know, basically, when you're in a toxic relationship and they flip it on the other person, have you ever been in a relationship like that? And they call you crazy when they're the ones that are a liar and everything like that. And this guy, so to make a long story short, a lot of people commented on the post because they could all relate to it, all right? A lot of people dealt with very selfish people. And a lot of the people that were in this group, a lot of them were divorced and everything. They've been through the mill. You know, some of them are bitter and everything like that. But this particular guy comes out and he says, well, you know what? If you women looked like her, and he posts a picture of a bikini model, and he says, you wouldn't be complaining. The women that look like that aren't complaining, okay? He was just so flat out ignorant, so judgmental. I mean, why he wasn't booted out of the group, I will never know, okay? But he was he he was coming across as you know, one of these type of guys that, you know, you will come across in dating who is going to judge you for your weight, okay? Judge you for your whole your whole how you look, okay? We had one woman in the group. She, man, she went in on him. She went off on him, okay? And she was calling him low class and everything like that because with him, everything was based on looks. And he's like, well, you know, I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, 
but you know, I'm just passing a message from a lot of the guys out there, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the women are overweight and everything like that, and they don't take care of themselves and, and all of this, right? And a lot of the women were saying, well, you know what? It's more than just looks, you know, uh, you know, you got to look at the whole person. Is that person, you know, do they have their act together? Are they a good person? This and that. And he's like, we don't care about that. We don't care about that. You are going to come across people like that. All right. You're going to come across people that are going to cut up your ego. And you have to know how to bypass these type of people. He also commented and he said something to the effect of, you know why you women are single? He says, because you don't want to post full body pictures. Okay. I was like, oh boy. I said to him, I said, let me tell you something. All right. There's a lot of women that look good and have nice figures and don't post full body pictures because they want to see if the guy really likes them for them or are they just looking at them, you know, as just somebody that they could have sex with, okay? And he was going on and on. Well, it's important, you know, uh, you know, for somebody to be able to, yes, it's important for somebody to be attracted to you, definitely. But you know what? The first thing you come out with doesn't isn't based on purely somebody's, you know, it's a make or break on their looks. And a lot of these people, it's a make or break on the looks. Okay. They, they, I mean, talk about judgmental. Ooh, they were like, you know, uh, I said, let me tell you something. Okay. There's a lot of men that like thick and curvy women. All right. And he's like, well, yeah, no, I like thick and curvy women. He's like, but that would be like a size 8 to 10. He's like, a size 14 to 16, no. I mean, he was just, he was just a flat out idiot, okay? Flat out idiot. But in any event, the reason that I'm bringing all this up, you guys, is because a lot of a lot of you are out there and you're going to encounter this. You're going to encounter these shallow people that are going to base you solely on your looks. Okay. Now I am not saying that looks aren't important because looks are very important. And today, you know, it's fierce out there. Why is it fierce? Because a lot of people have options today. So you want to put your best foot forward. You want to look your best, okay, without looking trashy, okay, in order to be sexy. You want to come off as sexy, but you don't want to come off as trashy, all right? There's a way to do it because whoever you meet, you want to be attractive to them, but you don't want them to just look at you solely as a sexual object because then everything's going to flip on and it's all going to be based on sex. And that that's when, you know, they're going to try you, okay? And this happens to a lot of women that post very, very sexy pictures, okay? In other words, they'll post a picture, a booty shot in a bikini on, you know, their their profile or something like that, or they'll post a picture with a lot of cleavage, you know, just letting it all hang out and everything like that. You know, what you put out there is what you get back. It's not about how many inboxes you get. It's about the quality of the person that you are going to attract. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys. All right. So, you know, first of all, you need to be you have to have that self-confidence within you that even if you're dealing with somebody and let's say this particular person, maybe they like somebody, you know, who's a very skinny type of Instagram model. And let's say you're a thick and curvy girl. That's fine. You don't have to change yourself for anybody else. This is what you got to understand. You just have to say to yourself, well, you know what? That person is not for me. This is not for me. There are a lot of guys that do like curvy women. Okay. So, but the thing is you want to be your best. Okay. And the reason I say this is because if you are not your best, you are going to get down on yourself and feel bad with your self-worth. And that's when you attract the wrong type of people. Because what happens is when you're not feeling good about yourself, 
you end up attracting people that may give you attention, but could be very toxic. These are people that will come on strong. These are sometimes people that are very controlling or very narcissistic and they lay on the love bombing. And because you have low self-worth, you know, you are you are just thirsty for it and you fall hard for that type of person because you're not really seeing them for who they are. So this is why I tell you guys, you really, you know, you got to feel a hundred percent confident within yourself when it comes to attraction. And when we talk about attraction, you know, you have to think about everything when you want to attract somebody. You you have to be healthy. You have to be fit, all right? You don't have to look like what's on Instagram because you got to remember something. A lot of the things in, that you see on social media, number one, a lot of them are Photoshopped pictures, okay? A lot of people also have a lot of plastic surgery done, and they do a lot of work on themselves and everything like that. That's all fine and dandy. That may attract, but that doesn't keep somebody, okay? And people think that they go out and they have all this work done and everything like that, you know, oh, that's how I'm going to land that guy. Or, you know, if I get all this work, that's gonna how I'm going to land this woman or whatever, okay? Yeah, you're going to attract the person, but what's going to what's going to keep the person is the connection that you build with that person. You have to be able to build that connection with that person so that that person is going to want to stick around, that it's not going to be short-lived because there's plenty of attractive women out there. There's plenty of attractive men out there. They're all over the place, you guys. And, you know, it now they're so accessible because of social media. It's not like, you know, the old days where you had to go out to actually meet people and you had to, you know, buy somebody a drink. You don't have to do these things. You just go in their DM and, you know, you throw out your feelers and you see, see who bites and who doesn't. So the, the point that I'm making with all of this is that you have to, you know, got to work on being the best that you could be. And that starts with being healthy. That starts with working out, doing a little each day. We had a woman in the group, you know, she was really down on herself. She was, uh, she broke up in a relationship and she said she gained a lot of weight and she just doesn't know what to do. She feels like she's spiraling down. And I was like, listen, if you feel that you can't do it on your own, then you need a group or you need a nutritionist, or you need somebody to get you going, okay? Because the hardest part is, is getting started. Once you get started, you get in a groove, okay? It's like years ago when I first started going to the gym, right? In the beginning, it was a little, you know, you just starting out or whatever, and then you get into it, and then you start to see results, and you want more and more, and you do it not so much that you, you're doing it to attract other people, although that's always a benefit, but you're doing it because you, you, you feel good, okay? When you look good too, you feel good. So you want to be the best version of you, okay? Now, another thing that I wanted to tell you guys, because I, I know a lot of male I have a lot of male friends. I got a lot of male followers. I know a lot of the guys in the groups. We have thousands of guys in all these groups, okay? And I'm going to give you some of the feedback that they have told me. A lot of them say that a lot of the women are very snappy, that they, they're always saying, they're talking about narcissists, okay? This is the big thing now. This is what everybody loves to bring up in every group. Oh, my ex was a narcissist. Oh, this person's a narcissist or that person's a narcissist and this and that. Okay. And then when they meet somebody, they start talking about their ex. Okay. What do I tell you guys all the time? Do not bring up your exes in the beginning. Number one, nobody wants to hear about the ex. Okay. And number two, you want to you want to leave a little mystery. You don't want to bring that in until you get to know that person after you've gone out on at least five dates or more. 
before you start, you know, gently bringing in about the ex. Because then you're going to come off as a complainer, a whiner, that you're mourning about your ex because you keep bringing them up. So trust me when I tell you, do not bring up the exes, and especially in the beginning. You want to be a little bit mysterious. You want that person, you know, to dive into trying to figure out what you're about, okay? And you should be asking them a lot of questions because you should be trying to see if this person is right for you. What do I tell you all the time? You should be asking them about their exes. I'm telling you, oh my God, this this is like, this is key in dating, you guys. I told you this before. When you ask them about their exes, you know, you're going to find out what this person is pretty much about a lot of the times, okay? You know, when they start complaining about their exes and they start saying, oh, you know, she was crazy, oh, you know, or she was needy, or she always, you know, she was always complaining about this or complaining about that, okay, that gives you an indication that, you know, number one, If they're saying that, you know, their ex was needy, that means that they're somebody who wants their space, okay? And if you're somebody that's good with that, that's great. Everybody should have their own life in a sense, but you still make each other a priority because you're working towards something. So, you know, that's that's what you have to do. You don't bring up your exes in the beginning. That's one of the things that is a big no, 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 okay? And you don't come off angry and bitter, Okay, it is a huge turnoff. I don't care if you've been hurt in your prior relationships. We've all been hurt. Most of the people out there have been hurt. Okay, why? Because it's just the longer you're out there, the more you see, the more hurt you got. You got a lot of people that have a lot of scars, you know, and have been, you know, screwed over by somebody. So, you know, you have to be able to to see, is this person, you know, are they able to give me a fair shake or are they still, you know, hurt from their ex, okay? And that believe, that's another thing too. A lot of times you meet people, they are still hurt from their ex and that is not somebody that you should get involved in, okay? They are damaged. They need to heal from their ex before they could start with you because if they start going on and on about their exes and whiny and this and that and everything like that and, you know, he did me wrong, she did me wrong and this and that, that is a huge red flag, you guys. That is a huge red flag, And then, you know, we had another debate, too, in the group about they were saying how exes were living, how how women were still living with their ex, okay? Or vice versa. You had guys that were still living with their exes. This is very common as well today that, you know, they're talking about as well in the groups that they're trying to date somebody and this person is living in the same house with their ex, All right. And there was such a huge debate that we had going on on this one. Okay. Where a lot of the guys were going off and saying, you know, this is just not healthy. I can't tell you how many women I've met that are still living with their exes and everything like that. And then you had women in there saying, well, you don't know the circumstances. You know, uh, not every breakup is a nasty breakup and this and that. You guys, Your ex is your ex for a reason, okay? Unless it is, you know, a special circumstance that you have to live with that person. Let's say it's financial or something. You have to get yourself out of there before you start dating, especially if you have kids too, all right? Because you don't want to surround your kids with, you know, mommies going out with so-and-so while daddy's sitting home, you know, on the couch, but they're not together, all right? Because this confuses children. It's not good. So, you know, your ex is your ex for a reason. Stop hanging on to your ex. Stop living with your ex. Okay, so you had a nice breakup and all of that, right? But that doesn't mean you live with your ex. You find a way to have your own space, okay? You have your own space. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to go, if you do that, if you're living with your ex and you go out there and you try to date somebody else, that person is going to get turned off, okay? Because even if you're not sleeping with your ex and you're living in the same house, the person that you're dating is going to suspect that you are, 
okay? There's going to be a trust issue there. So I, I just wanted to bring up that little tidbit about that as well. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up as well, you guys, is this. Like, I'm going to tell you, one of our groups, we have this singles group, okay? <laughs> oh, my goodness. These people, they're, you know, a lot of them, you know, they've been married or whatever, and or they're divorced or whatever. And they're talking about, you know, oh, you know, such a great group of people, you know, we should really try to, one girl got up there, she's like, we should try to match everybody up and this and that. So they set up this post where everybody's supposed to put their initial. And if you like the person, you like their initial, right? Everybody puts up their initial and yet nobody is liking anybody else's um, the comment with their initial, okay? They're all in there to meet people. And also it's like a support group as well for singles. And yet everyone has their guard up and nobody is taking the risk. Nobody is taking the initiative. Okay. And today it's so different. You guys, it's so different from the way it was years ago. All right. Because years ago, guys pursued more. Okay. Today, a lot of the guys are laid back. Okay. Today, a lot of the guys are waiting for the women to pursue them. And why is that? Because a lot of there's a lot of aggressive women out there. There's a lot of aggressive women out there. There's a lot of masculine women out there that chase the men. This is why you are having a hard time finding a relationship. You have women out there that are cooking for them, that the guy has never taken them out. You have women out there giving them sex right away on the first date. You have women out there get doing the friends with benefits. And we had we had one girl say in the group, well, what's wrong with the friends with benefits? What's wrong with... You, you want to do the friends with benefits? Fine. Then when you decide down the road that you want to have a relationship, okay, you will have a hard time finding a relationship because... Because you're doing this friends with benefits business, all right, that person, when it's time where you want a relationship, that person is not going to bother because there's so many friends with benefits around. So you're just adding to the problem. That's what's going on, okay? There's so much free, easy sex out there that, you know, people say, oh, you know, oh, it's great. You know, you could just have sex with somebody for a couple of hours and everything like that. And then you could say bye-bye and all that. That's great if you want to live that way the rest of your life, okay? But if you want to move forward in your life and you want to build with somebody, okay? Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you want to have children. Maybe you just want a partner and you want to, you know, buy a house one day together or something like that, okay? You're not going to be able to do it if, you know, you create this type of environment because now, you know what it is? You're giving away you know, yourself pretty much free and easy, free and easy. Okay. So there's no reason for somebody to commit to you. Why should they? Why should they? Why? Because they're dying to have kids. No, they rather have fun. They would rather have fun. And then maybe wait till they're in their late forties to maybe, you know, have a kid or something like that. And some of them, not even some of them not even. I can't tell you how many guys that we have in the groups that have never been married, all right? That don't even care about having children or any of that, all right? That just don't have any interest in any of that. So they don't have any interest in that, you guys, because they're able to get what they want without having to put the work in, okay? That's that's what it's about, all right? Because they understand that when they're in a relationship, a relationship takes work. It takes being responsible. It takes being selfless, okay? It means being able to compromise with somebody and not being able to do whatever the hell you want to do and not have to answer for it, okay? So you have people out there that are like that. But, you know, it is what it is. But the point is, if that's not the way you want to live your life and you don't want to be single the rest of your life and just floating around from bed to bed, and not only just floating around from bed to bed, you have to worry about sexually transmitted diseases too. Because you know what? It's becoming more and more common. 
And you have to be careful out there. You have to protect yourself because a lot of people are sleeping around. And don't think that it can't happen to you because it can. So you have to be careful. You have to use protection, all right? But here's the point I'm trying to, here's where I'm going with all this, all right? If you're looking for more, all right, you're not just looking to sleep around. If you're looking for more, then you have to know your target, okay? You have to know who to go for and who not to go for. And that's why I've done so many podcasts where I talk about, you know, when you see that somebody is not right, then you have to, your cutoff game has to be fierce. Go back and listen to my podcast on your cutoff game needs to be fierce. And the reason that I tell you guys this all the time is because you will waste a lot of time with the wrong person. And I tell you this again and again, it does not get easier as you get older, okay? I mean, there's always opportunity in this world, but, you know, the dating pool gets smaller as you get older. So, you know, you have to use your time wisely. Time is very important. I didn't realize this when I was younger, and that's why I'm telling you guys, okay? You know, don't think, you know, it's not important because you will look back on your life and you will have regrets. You'll regret that you were in this five-year relationship that went nowhere with somebody who wasn't right for you because you didn't cut it off when you could have been with somebody else who would have made you happy. This is, this is where I'm going with all of this. Okay. You you need to be focused. You need to be focused and you need to put yourself in the right places. I told you the dating apps are game It's not a good place today to try to meet somebody. You got to try to meet somebody other ways, okay? There, you know, friends, family, interest groups, stuff like that. And if you are going to do the dating apps, you've got to be focused. You got to know who's good and who's not and who's going to waste your time, okay? This is how you have to navigate because a lot of people that are very unsuccessful, It's because they pick the wrong people, because they see the red flags and they ignore them, okay? So, you know, you have to be, you have to be sharp and be focused, okay? And when you come across that person that you think that you could have something with them, you've got to know how to attract that person. You've got to know what that person likes and see if you fit that mold, okay? Besides the person, you know, being on the same page as you, you have to be able to attract that person to the point where that person wants you, wants to be with you. What do you have that is going to attract that person to make them want to stay with you? This is like, this is what everybody's searching for. Everybody is searching for What is it that will, you know, attract that woman or attract that man? What do I need to do to get that person? First of all, okay, you got to understand something. And this is what that idiot in the group didn't understand. He thought, oh, just because somebody looks like a swimsuit uh, bikini model that, oh, she has no problems getting a guy. And that is not true. That is not true, you guys. There are so many gorgeous women out there that are having a hard time meeting a good man, okay? Because there's a lot of pretty women out there. They're not the only ones. And a lot of times, they may be picking the wrong guys. They're they're picking guys that are very, you know, into themselves, They're picking guys that like variety. So it doesn't matter how freaking good looking you are, okay? Because they're not going to want you every day of the week. They're going to want something else. They're going to want a different, you know, slice of pizza on Tuesday because they just had you for the weekend. So you got to know who you're dealing with. That's why I tell you, it's more than just looks when it comes to attraction. Attraction, yes, you got to have that attraction to to catch somebody's eye. And especially, you know, with men, because men, initially, it's all visual, okay? They're going to look at you and they're going to say to themselves, am I sexually attracted to her? Do I want to sleep with her? Am I thirsty for this woman? That's the first thing. 
But then through conversation, constant conversation and making that connection, okay, where you, you're actually adding to that person's life. And what I mean adding to that person's life, you're enjoyable to be around. People want to be around somebody who they enjoy, okay? They don't want to be around a Debbie Downer. And there's a lot of people out there that are Debbie Downers, people that are very negative, people that complain, people that whine, people that are angry. Nobody wants to be around that, okay? You want to be, when you're around somebody and you're trying to attract somebody, you want to make that person happy without, you know, letting go of your boundaries. That's the other extreme too, because you have a lot of women out there that go beyond Okay, and and try to make a man happy thinking, oh, well, this is the way I'm going to get this guy or something. I'm going to just I'm going to do everything for him. I'm going to do his laundry. I'm going to do all the wifely duties without the title. Okay, there's so many women that do that and, you know, end up, you know, being dumped after that, because when you come across too much, you know, too over the top to the point where that person knows that they got you locked. That's when that person will take you for granted because you don't have your boundaries in place. In other words, they're saying to themselves, look at all that they're doing for me. Look at all that they're doing for me and look at how I'm treating them and they're putting up with that. That tells me that they are a doormat, okay? That they have no self-worth and can't walk away. So I'm just gonna do what I want. This was another issue, too, that we had in the group. We had a post up. Somebody put up this post, you guys. And they said, when the right man finds the right woman, okay, he will do everything he can to make her happy. And he will be this great, you know, knight in shining armor. And I said, that is not true, Okay, unless that woman has boundaries, okay, because even if you find somebody that is really into you and really likes you, eventually they are going to try you to see how much you're going to put up with. Because in the end, you know, it's just human nature, people want to do what they want to do. Okay, and it's not necessarily meaning that they want to even cheat or anything like that. I'm just talking about, you know, whatever they want to do. Maybe they want to go out with their friends all the time, or maybe they don't, they feel like they don't have to call you back or something like that. And you're still there, you know, waiting and, you know, uh, taking their call when they're treating you like garbage. Okay, even though they really like you and everything like that. And people say, well, you know, if they really liked you, they wouldn't do that and stuff like that. No, they could really like you and do that because you know what? Because you're taking it, you're taking it and they're able to do whatever they want to. Okay, which is the best of both worlds. It's like having your cake and eat it, too. This is what I'm trying to tell you guys, you know, but if they know that you're not the type of person that's going to put up with that they know that they will have respect for you, all right? And what do I tell you all the time about respect? And it's so important, oh my God. You know, you cannot have love without respecting who you're with. So they gotta respect you. And that means not being a doormat, okay? So there's a fine line there. It's a matter of making somebody happy, but not being a doormat, okay? So these are just a couple of things I wanted to bring up about attraction and everything like that. So I hope it helps you. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and share, 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 and have a great day. I want to tell you guys about a great book that I highly recommend. It's a book called Are You the One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. Barbara DeAngelis is a New York Times bestselling author. She's got a lot of books, you guys, on Amazon, and you can listen to it free through Audible's 30-day trial, 30-day free trial. It doesn't cost you anything. And in her book, she talks about, you know, if you're married and you're wondering if you could be happier, if you're single and wondering how to avoid another wrong partner, or you're wondering if the person you're with is the one for you. 
This book is so spot on. I got this book years ago. A friend recommended it to me because let's face it, when we're growing up, nobody tells us these things, right? So we learn through years of experience and this book sums up so much and is so relevant to relationships and getting to know what somebody is about, how to avoid making the mistakes that we make, the six essential qualities to look for in a mate, how to spot fatal flaws in a partner, how to create that sexual chemistry you want. So go to Audible and you can look, you can go to my link, which is tinyurl.com slash ask yes now okay and you have 30 days to get a free audiobook you can cancel any time and on top of that you guys there's other books on there too there's other books that she's written like what women want men to know uh the secrets about men every woman should know so go to the link tinyurl.com backslash ask yes now and get your free trial membership 